Welcome to the first talk of the 2022 IPA Education Webinar Series. For this session, myself, Laura Harris, and my colleague, Sheldon Lee, will be discussing data collection, and more specifically, how accurate and transparent patient data can enhance efficiency and add value to the healthcare system. Before I start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, which, for the IPA office, is the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and recognise their continuing connection to land, water and culture. We pay our respects to Elders today and those who walk in spirit. Data collection at IPA is vital, as each patient episode needs to be counted for activity-based funding to be effective. IPA collects activity data from nine different streams, which is submitted by jurisdictions online via the IPA data submission portal. These data streams include admitted acute, admitted subacute and non-acute, non-admitted services and emergency services in both aggregated and patient level data forms, mental health care, senatal events and teaching, training and research. This activity data is subsequently linked to corresponding national hospital cost data, which provides the entire picture of a patient presentation. To ensure transparency of this activity and cost data, IPA makes the data available to jurisdictions and the public via its national benchmarking portal. The national benchmarking portal allows for the comparison of hospital cost and activity data across Australian public hospitals. The data development, collection and transparency process is a collaborative one that involves three key stakeholders, including IPA, the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare and jurisdictions. Each key stakeholder has a different but equally important role and responsibility in the data development and collection process. IPA is responsible for the National Benchmarking Portal, the metadata structure, the data set specification and the data request specification and relevant data collections to enable activity-based funding. The Australian Institute of Health and Welfare is responsible for providing end-to-end -end services in relation to the health and welfare information and statistics, which include but aren't limited to My Hospitals, which includes reports and interactive data tools to discover information about local hospitals as well as hospitals nationally, and the Metadata Online Registry, also known as Meteor, which is Australia's repository for national metadata standards for health, housing, community services, statistics and information. Jurisdictions are responsible for the submission of cost and activity data and for providing relevant and essential information during consultation to drive decision making. Each of these key stakeholders work collaboratively to ensure that the data development, collecting and reporting process runs smoothly. As I previously mentioned, the data development process, which includes the development of metadata, is one of IPA's responsibilities. On the left is a diagram that outlines the metadata structure. At the top of the structure is the data set specification. IPA is responsible for maintaining the relevant data set specification for activity-based funding classifications. A good example of this is the Admitted Care National Minimum data set. The data set specification is made up of various data elements, which is the second row of the diagram. These data elements are a combination of data items such as patient demographics, for example, date of birth, and hospital administrative collections, such as the admission date when a patient arrives at hospital, which can be seen in the bottom two rows of the diagram. Each classification will have numerous data elements which combine to make up the data set specification as a whole. For example, the admitted patient care National Minimum Data Set has approximately 50 data elements. An example of the metadata structure for the admitted care is seen on the right. The data element is the episode of care principal diagnosis, which is created using a combination of the collection occasion, which is the episode of care, 
the data item to be collected, which is the principal diagnosis, and the classification scheme, which is the ICD 10 AM code set. This also includes certain rules for formatting, which in this example refer to character length and the alphanumeric format of the ICD 10 AM code. Once the metadata structure is developed, these can be found in the Metadata Online Registry or Meteor, which is a national repository for metadata standards. Meteor is administered and managed by the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, and there is a public website that can be accessed to view data standards, which are endorsed metadata in health as well as other sectors. IPA and the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare work closely together and with jurisdictions to ensure that any data collection that is developed is consistent across data standards and that the data is being collected is relevant, fit for purpose and reliable. A few examples of what can be found on Meteor are listed, which span from patient demographic formatting to technical definitions to classification schemes. In terms of the data set specification, one classification can have more than one specification. For example, emergency care has both a national minimum data set and a national best endeavours data set. The difference between these is that the national minimum data set is a mandatory collection, which is established when all jurisdictions are able to collect the required items, whereas a national best endeavours data set is the data collection that we're aiming to achieve for all jurisdictions. Both the national minimum data set and the national best endeavours data set are equally important. National Best Endeavour data sets enable data to be collected where available. For example, in rural emergency services where systems and resources may create restrictions when compared to metropolitan emergency services. A National Best Endeavours data set aims to drive system improvement and support quality of data collection with the ultimate aim of transitioning collections to a mandatory national minimum data set over time. The data development process requires a close working relationship between IPA and the Institute of Health and Welfare. IPA identifies metadata requirements and data standards, determines the relevant data set specifications through the process that I outlined earlier, and develops the data request specification, which is technical specifications to enable data collection. The Australian Institute of Health and Welfare supports the development of the metadata within Meteor, conducts technical reviews of the data set specification to ensure accuracy and alignment to other data standards and governs the National Health Data and Information Standards Committee. This committee governs health data standards and IPA and the jurisdictions are both members. If agreement cannot be achieved in this committee, IPA can determine their own data standards for activity-based funding reporting purposes. There are five main stages of the data development cycle. Planning occurs from January to April, which is when updates or refinements to the data set specification are proposed. Jurisdictions are consulted and the development of the program is agreed between IPA and the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare. Development occurs from April to August, where NEDISC, which is the committee that I mentioned earlier, endorse IPA's metadata plan, jurisdictions are further consulted, and draft metadata for the data set specification is developed in Meteor. In September to November, the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare undertakes a technical review and once approved, supplies IPA with a metadata clearance certificate. The data set specification is finalised and endorsed from November to December and IPA develops reference materials to support jurisdictions in their data collection. The final stage is the data request specification finalisation and endorsement which occurs from December to March. I'll now pass on to my colleague Sheldon who will further explain this process. Hi everyone, this is Sheldon. 
I'm going to continue to take you through how IPA verify data quality and the adding value to it. Based on the published data standard, Laura mentioned before, data request specification are established to inform our data submitters about our data requirement in details. The data request specifications includes data format, content validation rules, data linkage, which will assist data submitters to extract the data from its own database for submission to EPA. In this session, I'm going to show you some key steps in EPA data collection process, especially how we interact with stakeholders to improve our data quality. In consultation with our stakeholders, IPA publish three years data plan on an annually basis. It keeps our stakeholder informed about IPA's data requirement, which includes details requirements such like a classification to be used against each data stream, data submission timeline, specifies when data is required to be submitted to IPA. As we know, introducing and collecting new data items could be a very lengthy process. The plan outlines IPA's intention for future data needs as well. For handle data submissions to IPA, we develop a specific data portal for each IPA data collection. The data portal including standard features such like structure validation ensures data items are reported in the right place, content validation to check data values are reported in accordance with data standards, data linking to ensure data can be linked across different data collection as expected, such as the face level data can be linked to the episode level data. We also add some advanced feature to the portal process as well. One of them is duration of classification. The portal will automatically derive a proper classification against the data submitted, such as Australian refined diagnostic related group classification will be added to all the admitted patient care data uploaded to the portal. The portal will also derive the native year national weighted activity unit to each of the, the patient records where it is applicable. The other use and the function of IPA data portal includes a user own space for data upload and review. User is able to download the validation and the linking report once the upload file is fully processed in IPA data portal. The processed data file, including classification and the national weighted activity unit, is available for download from the portal as well. There is a separate submission function for user to send the data to IPA. Through this function, data submitter can review and improve data quality and accuracy before sending formal submission to IPA. IPA will only pick up the final data once the formal submission arrived in our data warehouse. This will cut down lots of interaction between data submitter and the IPA to improve the efficiency of the data submission. Along with formal submission, IPA also requests data submitter to provide a statement insurance and the data quality insurance to IPA. These documents provide additional information about the data, in, such as service movement between hospitals or issues data submitter had while collecting data from their hospitals. Based on this information, IPA produces active data analysis and cost report to share with our stakeholders. Jurisdictions are able to provide comments against the funding in the report, which will enhance IPA's understanding of what actually happens 
in public hospitals. Apart from cost data report, IPA engages a third party to conduct independent financial review every year. It aims to improve the consistency and the transparency of the cost data submissions. The reviewer will assess participating hospital to see whether they have incurred the appropriate cost and activity in the data submission to IPA. It also provides an overall summary and fundings by jurisdiction and for each participating site. The review outlines the recommendation for IPA and the jurisdiction to consider in the future round as well. Once data is finalized, IPA uploads the data to a secure online platform we call National Benchmarking Portal. The National Benchmarking Portal is accessible to state health, local hospital network, and the public hospital. It provides overall summary for all public hospitals' activities, such as animated acute care, sub acute care, emergency care, and outpatient service event. The portal contains function which allows users to customize the report at varying level of information, such as service category or hospital. Users have access to the most recent data to measure the cost of hospital activities. It allows comparative analysis, such as manager in Westmead Hospital is able to compare their service against the activities in Royal Melbourne Hospital. It opens up that the conversation between the hospital managers may lead to some improvement in their hospital practice. Once connecting all the talking points together, now you are able to see a complete data collection cycle in IPA. It shows how IPA turn our data requirements into a robust data collection. These data collections utilize within the IPA to inform decision making for the provision of hospital care services. Improving data quality is an ongoing project in IPA. For future projects, IPA's board, the pricing authority, considers that open access to data alongside appropriate privacy protection can enhance policy decisions. IPA is currently undertaking additional consultation with jurisdiction and the broader stakeholder group prior to the broadening access to the national benchmarking portal. It is planned to open the national benchmarking portal to the public in late 2022. IPA will make further enhancement to the current secure data management system. It aims to improve the robustness and the speed of the data submission, loading, and the validation process. IPA will also release the three-year data plan 2022-23 to 2024-25 in June 2022. This document will keep our stakeholders well informed about IPA's data requirement in future. This concludes our presentation. Thank you very much.